Welcome to Heart Talk on Shalom World. I'm Dina Marie Hale, your host. On Heart Talk, we take a look at the heart of the Roman Catholic Church and their bishops, the shepherds who lead souls to Jesus Christ. Today, we have a chance to meet Bishop Francis Callist, who is the bishop in the Diocese of Meerut, and we go to India. Your Excellency, welcome to Heart Talk. It's great to have you joining us today. Thank you, Dina Mary, for having me for this interview. It's a great privilege for me to be in the Shalom World TV, and I thank you in a special way for it. Thank you. Your Grace, I'd love to start by hearing a little bit about your childhood. Can you tell us a little bit about growing up and the influence that your parents had on you and your vocation to the priesthood? That's a good question, and I would like to begin with that. I come from a lower middle class family, and my father was the only breadwinner, and he was a junior high school teacher. My mother is a home was a homemaker. Now both are not there; they have gone for their eternal reward. Now we were actually four boys and two girls, and they have been bringing us up. in a very uh, spiritual way devotionally when i was studying in the uh, 11th standard that time my father again adopted three orphan girls from the same family both their both the parents passed away one with an accident so my father took over those three girls and brought them home and then he said that these are our children again so our number increased to 9 so we are nine in the family i always say that we are nine in the family and five girls and four boys now i remember today i am a bishop a priest and all that i owe my vocation to my father he was a very spiritual person daily mass goer he never missed a mass in case in our parish due to some reasons or the unavailability of the priest there is no mass means my father would run to the next parish to have the holy eucharist and not only that when we were small kids the next to me i am the eldest in the family next to me is my brother and between us there is one year gap and so my father when we were very small the morning we used to sleep he used to take us up carry in both the hands to the church daily he used to carry us to the church sometimes my mother used to say let the children sleep a little more but my ma- father would never every day practically used to carry us to the church so from the beginning itself he has been sowing that seed of faith in us your grace i understand there is a minor basilica that was actually built by a muslim queen near your diocese and i wondered how that place of pilgrimage how those people have impacted you and and also the impact of our our lady the blessed virgin mary how, how that's impacted you in your priesthood my devotion to my mother that is from the family itself devotion to mother is very prevalent and in my family that was very strong my father he had a tremendous devotion and that he had transmitted us to us even in our uh, daily family prayer special prayers to be said he used to have so many prayers i remember one incident and that used to that has a relationship with where i am now in mira diocese where we have the basilica of our lady of graces sardana uh, i just look back now See, when I was a small boy, I think I was studying in the middle school. At that time, one afternoon, it was a holiday, and the lunch was delayed. And my mother, I think that particular day, they didn't have much to uh, cook. Provisions were not there, but she took some rice and some pulses and put together, and she was uh, boiling it to give us. I was feeling terribly hungry, so I. i was sitting in my small house in the veranda and very hungry just uh, folded my legs and i was sitting like that that time i just had a kind of uh, an experience i don't call it a vision or something an experience towards the north side uh, mary with a child 
and that uh, very very strong image it was for me though i didn't take it very seriously and then that mother maybe it was a, a kind of a reflex like i had seen the film anne velangani so maybe that also must have played in my mind so i saw that beautiful picture of our blessed mother and then it remained with me i grew into it when i joined the minor seminary in 1973 sardana when i came to north in sardana in our minor seminary where the basilica is situated when i entered the shrine first time when i saw that picture of our lady of graces immediately the incident that i saw towards the north that image of our blessed mother struck me so i could really feel it this thing as i had never spoken to anybody this is the first time i am saying so i just started relating it is our lady of graces called me when i was in need when i was hungry she calls me from my home now i have come and she was in the north so now i have come to the north and then this basilica played a greater role in my life two years i was as a minus minister in there and then i saw people coming there praying at the shrine placing their uh, needs before our blessed mother and i also i noticed after a year they used to come to thank the mother for the favors received lot of miracles were taking place and i used to see the pilgrims coming sharing their faith experience that's something wonderful it's a basilica minor basilica declared in 1961 the background is a muslim girl by name farzana came to delhi she was dancing in the darbar and there uh, the general uh, walter reinhard he was in the british uh, east india company then he quit it and he became a mercenary so he fell in love with and he went to her there he was given the jagir of from muzaffarnagar to aligarh so sardana he made it as a capital while living with him he was a catholic living with him she shared his faith learned his faith experienced his faith after his death three years after his death she embraced catholicism got baptized became a catholic the first thing she did was to build this beautiful magnificent basilica the church and from then onwards the devotion to our blessed mother our lady of graces began and it is the minor basilica this has really influenced me and of course from childhood onwards uh, mary i consider it as my own mother and that's the tremendous and mary is a mother of priests in my life as a priest now as a bishop uh, the role of my mother our lady is tremendous your grace can you share with us about how you've endured suffering at a personal level I know right before you were appointed to be bishop you were involved in a very very fatal bus accident many people died such a tragedy in India how have you dealt with such a difficult situation and such a tragedy in your own life suffering has a great value in our life because the redemption is brought to mankind through the sufferings of Jesus and Jesus called us if you want to follow me he said deny yourself take up the cross and follow me so suffering is very much related to our life without suffering we cannot uh, really fulfill the mission or live the life as a christian now with regard to my life how i learned it uh, you said about that accident the bus accident was a very fatal accident but not only really one accident i have several accidents in my life uh, but to uh, Uh, the serious accidents as such i had was uh, almost three as a priest three scooter accidents two jeep accidents and then almost two bus accidents and this to narrate and uh, they were really serious accidents so so much so when my name was announced as a bishop of meerut Uh, my predecessor bishop patrick wrote a letter to all the priests and religious and the faithful in the diocese and in that he said we have an accident prone bishop <laughs> this is what he wrote in that letter now that bus accident as a rector i went through was a very serious accident 
and in that i had uh, injured my third spinal disc and also the l4 the lower disc uh, which was very serious and they all thought that i am going to be paralyzed be- below neck it was in 2007 in that accident more than 40 people died that was the newspaper report i was also put among the dead and then i regained my consciousness and people saw my movement and picked me up so those are the things in my life suffering has been always the lord talking to me it is through the sufferings he has made me see uh, by nature man is selfish and to listen to god take his will we need to say no to the self deny the self and sufferings is a great means for us to deny the self and to open ourselves to uh, what god wants that's what i always took sufferings in my life not only the accidents even many other misunderstandings and many other uh, problems difficulties oppositions all this i take it as how god deals with me how he draws me closer to him how he makes me to be selfless but after some time i realized the value of it in my life how it brings me closer to jesus how it makes me to be in intimacy with jesus today people all try to run away from sufferings even our priests they want to uh, be le- means the lesser the sufferings the merrier so no one wants to take up sufferings actually today everybody preaches the gospel of prosperity even to the charismatics i always say we always preach the gospel of pra- pr- uh, prosperity what about the gospel of radicality the gospel of radicality is one that we are called to live and that's the one which is going to give life unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies it cannot give life suffering is a means that i die to myself then i become fruitful in my life i have learned that through the sufferings the lord has been making me to die to myself and then he uses me powerfully after every sufferings after every problems difficulties oppositions hardships then the lord is using me for something greater something uh, higher and especially the gospel becomes more relevant more effective more meaningful and that's why so suffering has a great value i think we must learn to accept sufferings it's in those most difficult situations where we just rely upon god we rely upon our prayer we rely and depend upon god when when all seems dark when all seems like life could end that we know jesus is the real answer and your grace i know that you have been so involved in fact many people want you to come and speak and you've spoken so much at the charismatic renewal movement uh you're involved in leadership that this is so important to you why is this movement so important to you and why do you spend so much time dedicated to speaking and to coming to be involved with this group of people thank you so much for this question in fact how i came into the charismatic circle is a big uh, uh, surprise for me also i was a simple priest in a neighboring uh, parish uh, in the border of delhi uh, that is st paul's church krishnagar it's when i was a priest there the charismatic the delhi service team both english section as well as the uh hindi section they used to call me for a recollection talk it is from them i really came to know in a deeper way about the charismatic spirituality you know i love the charismatic renewal why because uh, a baptized christian is to be a spirit filled and spirit led person that's what a b- baptized christian is and the catholic charismatic renewal helps a person to be spirit filled and spirit led it helps me to live up to the baptismal promises that's what a christian is called to so i have uh, understood this and that's why i love the renewal the charismatic renewal and i am ready to do anything for it to spread that renewal the deeper uh, meaning of being a charismatic he is being a christian every baptized christian is a charismatic 
If he says, I am not a charismatic, he is not a Christian. That's what my way of looking at it. Because as I said to you, a charismatic is a spirit-filled and spirit-led person. And that's what a baptized Christian has to be. So that's why I always say, we must focus and stress more on the uh, essence of the Catholic charismatic uh, spirituality. Your Grace, you are known for being one who really supports the laity and the laity's role in the church is big. It's really important. And I'd love for you to share some examples of ways that you've seen the laity impact the church in a positive way, how you've worked with the laity and really support them in their role in really benefiting the mission of Jesus Christ. I was also like, priest means someone who is greater. The laity are the second, second class citizens in the church. But then with Vatican II, the whole thing got changed. We understood the right perspective of the church. And for me, being with the people in the village, the Christians, I had a tremendous uh, kind of uh, appreciation for the people. Also, I had a thirst for bringing the lay people up in the forefront as real Christians. So I started wherever it was necessary, I started doing that. In my diocese, I have taken up lay people to be appointed in the schools. So there are many, uh, quite a few lay people now in my diocese as a, uh, principals. And then also wherever it is possible, I share responsibilities with the laity to bring them up. In the Catholic charismatic circle, the renewal, the Catholic charismatic uh, renewal has empowered the laity. This is one of the uh, 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 benefits of the renewal. It has empowered the laity. Today you look around how the lay people are coming forward, frontline ministries, preaching so powerfully. In fact, Cyril John inspires me a lot, inspires me a lot. Many times his life used to question my own life as a bishop. And I have been closely relating with him, traveling with him in various programs, how powerfully he is doing the ministry in the church. He was a, a parliamentarian and all that type of things. But then in spite of all that busy schedule, he used to take time out for the ministry. When we travel, even in the flight or anywhere, he was always reading the Bible or praying the rosary. What a great example we have got the lay people. And then he has been a great example, great model for me. And that's why lay people are coming forward. And I really thank the Lord for this. And we must, I uh, plead with every priest, every bishop, every religious, promote the laity. That will make the church strong, vibrant. So that's what my, so that's why I am really uh, fond of laity coming up in the church. Your Grace, we know that we're living in difficult times when we're spreading the gospel, and there's many ears that are closed to the good news of Jesus Christ. And I want to ask you, in, in North India, where there's a very small Catholic church and the challenges to sharing the gospel can be very difficult, what's been your experience in overcoming some of these challenges in, in such difficult times? I am in that situation. That's why I'm happy that you asked me this question. You know, I have been uh, working as a priest, as a deacon in many places. Uh, I was studying in St. Albert's College, Ranchi, Jharkhand. That was a wonderful experience for me. I was involved in the ministry. I had gone to an interior village and I stayed almost 15 days with the people and we evangelized the people. At the last day, I baptized 29 people under a tree. And all that beautiful experience I have, very rewarding. But when you come to Uttar Pradesh, for example, the Agra ecclesiastical region has 12 dioceses. And in that 12 dioceses, the number of Catholics in every diocese is very small. 4,000 some dioceses and maybe 8, 9,000 or 12,000 something. But in Mira diocese, uh, I am proud to say, and the credit goes to my priests and the religious working in the diocese, we have about 34,000. Now, the 34,000 in some other places, a parish will have more than 50,000. So, that's the situation. And then we have a lot of struggles, a lot of challenges. But, I would say, 
there are a lot of success stories also our ministry is mainly we are busy with the educational apostolate of course again and the social work apostolate also the health ministry and also now we are starting many various alternate ministries for evangelization in our area in up and uh, it has been bearing fruits your grace can you share with us times in your life where you really felt like god was there this was a miraculous experience that you really felt god touching you and and being involved in your life personally for me uh sincerely speaking every moment is the god experience because he is with me and it's only when sometimes i am so selfish that i lose sight of him other than those moments every moment is a miraculous god experience for me that death moment when i met with an accident when they picked me up because i was all wounded my head was broken it was hanging my third spinal disc was totally damaged it has to be replaced my lower disc was prolapsed i had a hip fracture and wounds all over i had a nose fracture in that uh, accident i was like a dead person put among the dead people i was lying among the dead on the road but when i gained my consciousness i could it took time for me to experience that i am among the dead but when i made some movements some people at the uh, at a distance saw that and they came and picked me up and put me there and put that back and tied it nicely to stop the bleeding etc so those things that moment i really feel that the lord was with me because i felt a kind of a, a calmness gentleness peacefulness though my bystanders were speaking about me this is very bad he may not survive is head injury is bleeding but yet i within me was experiencing a kind of a tremendous someone who is with me comforting me and though it was so painful i could bear it up and later on i was thinking of 40 of my companions died above 40 people died at the spot about 30 35 later on after hospitalization they have died they were my fellow travelers they have gone but the lord kept me still he wanted me so i consider that as a miraculous intervention of jesus in my life you grace as we come to a close today could you please just share with us a final message and then i know we'd love to have your blessing and a prayer to really reach out to the people today and to encourage us in our faith walk thank you lord for this wonderful moment that you have been with us it's you lord who have been speaking and so lord i thank you i praise you i worship you i also in a special way at this moment plead with you pray to you intercede with you to touch and bless and transform and renew and strengthen every person who will listen to this uh, program who will listen to this words of yours that they may be touched and transformed and to be in your uh, likeness be with them bless them abundantly mary our mother be a mother to them and look after them we ask this in the precious name of jesus the lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit come upon you and remain with you forever amen thank you so much we've really learned about how important the power of prayer is and to continue to cling to god in all situations know that we continue to pray for you your grace and let us continue to pray for all of our priests all of our bishops all of our shepherds and pray for their hearts to continue to lead souls to jesus christ Thanks for joining us on today's edition of Heart Talk on Shalom World. May God be with you. My life is a miracle. 
Every child has a story of, of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story.